Good evening. Welcome to the Camera Artist Guild Thursday Critique. I am your host, George Deloach. I'm a portrait artist and photographer's coach, and this is where we help photographers learn to master the photographic arts. Camera Artist Guild was started about three years ago with a specific desire to help photographers grow and master the art form of photography. It doesn't make a difference where you are in your photographic journey, whether you're just beginning or whether you've been at it for quite a while. All of us can learn from the process of critiquing images. A lot of times an extra set of eyes can see things that you don't see. And each time you enter into the critique process, your work improves. I have watched artists who have started out with us uh, three years ago or a couple of years ago, and I've watched them improve weekly as their work gets better as they submit themselves to critique. So I hope that you'll come and do that. Now I got to take care of a couple of other housekeeping things and share with you a couple of things that I think are important. Okay, Jerome Lynch. All right, Jerome, working uh, again. We just, I guess today we got quite a few at the ocean uh, or the sea or the lake. And probably from where you are, that's probably Lake Michigan. Uh, and I like what you're trying to do, but there's a couple of challenges here. You really pick a very difficult lighting situation to work with. Uh, you are dealing with the sun where even though uh, the sun is going down, uh, it is still up here on the horizon and it's so bright that it draws your attention away from the people and it tricks your exposure. Now I know you've thrown in artificial light over there, but they are underexposed. They're just underexposed. If you uh, check with the info palette, which is what I do, click the info palette, it opens up these numbers here, go to the pointer tool, and you start checking skin tones. Uh, they're in their 80, uh, the skin tones in the 80 levels, and they, they should not be in the 80 levels, and the gray t-shirts are like 102, 102, 104. Now, your color's right, that's almost uh, perfectly neutral color, but that gray should be about 128 rather than 102. So what can we do to pull this one out? Let's see if we can't do a couple of things here to try to pull it out and doll it up just a little bit. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna do, I always do this, even though it's not necessary this time, is Control J, duplicate the layer. I am going to, uh, well, I, actually I'll use that duplicate layer here in a minute. Uh, now I'm gonna go to levels and I'm gonna select levels and in levels, I'm going to play around with the levels. I'm going to go to the mid-level slider, the mid, the gray, the, the mid-tones. And I am going to bring that mid-tone up a little bit to lighten, lighten up the skin tones. I'm going to bring the white slider in. It's going to brighten it up a little bit more. I'm going to bring the black slider down a little bit to restore a little contrast right about there. I got too much on the mid-tones. Let's take it back to right along and right along and there somewhere. Okay, now that's pretty good, but now that just blew out uh, this entire area up here and made it even worse. Now how do we deal with that? We go back, click on the layer mask. We're gonna fill that mask with black right now. So that I'm gonna use control and backspace since uh, my black is on the back side over here. It would be uh, alt uh, backspace if it were on the front but now I filled it with black now I'm going to get my brush and I'm going to have a white brush I'm going to have a white brush at 100% and now I'm just going to go in here to where they are and let me shrink that brush down a little bit so I can be a little more a little more accurate with it and let's just bring just the area that we lightened up just them uh, we're going to bring that back. You should be able to see it lightening up here as, as we move around. Uh, now, if you want to check what you're doing, is right next to your brackets. Uh, you have the P key on your, on your keyboard. You have IOP on the keyboard on the second row from the top. You have a right bracket, a left bracket, and then you have a straight up and down bar. If you click that straight up and down bar, it applies a, a red mask to the area that you're working with. The area that you're working with is clear. The area that's red is, is still being affected by the original mask. So now you can see what you're doing. Now you need to switch colors over this time, actually reverse it. But I can look at it right now. Now I can just go in 
and clean up all of this area here that I want to have, I want to return to the um, brightened area that I made. Okay, there we go. Now we've got him pretty well done. I know there's a couple of spots there, but we'll just, you know, in the uh, interest of saving time. Now I'll click that bar and it goes back again. Now they're looking good, but now still the sun up there is just uh, really kind of getting to me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back down to this layer mask right here. I'm going to get my patch tool, control J. I'm going to take that patch tool and I'm just going to select around the sun and around that kind of corona area of the sun. And I'm going to drag it off into a darker area of the page and click it. And now I'm going to clear up the this kind of halo here and the kind of halo off on that side and the halo off on this side. Okay. Now you might say, but I still want the sun. I mean, I, we at least want to have some indication of the sun. This looks fine. Okay. What we do now is let's go back. We're going to go back that same layer. We're going to go to the opacity slider right here and we're going to slide that opacity slider back just a little bit until just a hint of that sun comes in. Okay, now there we go. Now we have now we have gone through it. Let's go to the history palette. Let's click the uh, the camera icon to take a snapshot of it. This is where we began, and this is where we ended up. Just a couple of things that you can do to make that uh, that situation pop. Hey, hey, Jamie, how you doing, man? Okay, so I uh, hope that'll help out. Uh, keep shooting there, Jerome. You're getting better each and every day. Okay, John Harville. John, man, you jumped way out of your lane and uh, going into a product shot here, man. Uh, good, good move. Uh, we have two people, one other person who does a lot of product stuff, uh, Maurice, and we will... Uh, come across his work here in a moment. A uh, couple of things though. Now, product shots are a different animal. So you really got to think about what you're doing when you put together a product shot. Now, I like the idea that you have her in the background. I would have never chopped her off. I like the fact that, that she's out of focus. That's great. I like the fact that her hands are gripped. But rotate that cup around so her nails are not interfering with the logo and so that this TG, the gem, which is uh, the logo, this TG can be seen. It should be right up here. And then if this white bar is blowing that out, then move your position, your camera position or uh, the light position so that that bar comes over here and we get the gem sticking straight out in front of the camera without the fingernails getting close to it because the reflection of the fingernails are also uh, putting a, a bit of a reflection on the logo and the main thing is to tell the story. Uh, you have a sports bottle, you have a attractive lady in, in gym attire, and you have the logo. Now the other thing is is that there are some kind of marks on the lower end of that bottle. I don't know what they are. Uh, whether they're a reflection or whether it's just the fact that the bottle squeezed and you have those marks there. Those are easy enough to take out. Simply take that same patch tool that I use. Well, now let's duplicate the layer just uh, to be on the safe side because I may want to... How in the world did that happen? I want to duplicate the layer. <laughs> I don't want to create a, an additional layer. Okay, let's do control J. There we go. Duplicate the layer. Take the patch tool. Come right on in on that one spot right there. Let's just move quickly to try to knock out uh, some of those shadows. And there we go there. Uh, be careful not to dip into the white because otherwise it will flare uh, out into your, uh, your bottle. And then let's pull that over there. And I went too far with this and ended up with it looking. Okay, there we go. Now, now we've taken out those marks. You really got to stop focusing on every little detail because this is a product shot uh, and, and work on it. But I really commend you for continuing to stretch and to try new things. Okay, let's see where we are. 
Oh, Herb and Ambrose, welcome. All right. Uh, uh, Keith Davis and uh, Keith uh, again. You, Keith loves these unusual shots, and it is an unusual shot. What can I tell you? You carried it off. Uh, to me, I think she looks a little stoned, uh, personally, but uh, maybe that just reflects an old lifetime or so ago in my history. <laughs> no longer today, but back in the day. Uh, still, you know, you executed it well. Everything, Everything's working on that one. Uh, another one to Keith Davis. Uh, Keith, I don't know why we l took off the top of her head on this one when you have so much torso down here. Uh, I can see if you're doing a tight crop, but on this one it's not, so leave, some, leave the head there. Uh, you might as well see all of her body rather than making it look like she's squeezing out of the top of the page with her head all the way up to the very top of the page. And, and much of her torso down below. Okay, uh, there we go. And uh, one more Keith, just a standard lady. And uh, we'll knock that out. Let's uh, jump on over here, Elie. Again, another one at the beach. And on this one, take some time to really think when you are doing your images about how your model is looking. Uh, I think that this would have made a much stronger image if she had, rather than holding her hand to her head, pull this wrap around her going in the other direction, maybe put her arm on her hip or something like that. That would take care of all this lower abdomen area, which is not as becoming as it could be. And uh, I think she would be happier with the image. We are all very body conscious. Uh, and so I think that uh, just stopping and bringing your model into a pose, taking a look at it through the viewfinder, really examining all of the areas. Now, I love the shallow depth of field. That's fine. Uh, I would have preferred to be lower on camera angle, closer to her eye level rather than looking down in this direction. But the main thing is, is bring that wrap around here so that she can, uh, that, that wrap will help her look slimmer. And I think she'll be much happier with the image. Okay, thank you for submitting. Uh, Diana Rutger. Uh, nice image, Diana. Uh, you are really getting good at these composites. Each time you do them, you get better, you learn more, you get better skills at it. Uh, the dance moves are phenomenal. You put them all together very nicely in a composite. Uh, this, I think, would uh, win awards, or if not awards, it would score very well in, in PPA print competition. It should merit without a problem at all. Uh, I think it would do well. So congratulations. You are really, really improving on those composites. I'm watching you move and, and develop as you go. And uh, Diana's our, our uh, Midwesterner, uh, Iowa. And uh, just really good work. Okay, this is Diana again. And on this one, you were struggling a little bit. Uh, she looks a little uncomfortable. I know you got the, you're, you're working with the uh, two light sources, congratulations. Uh, you've got, uh, I don't know whether this is the sun or a second light source. I kind of tend to believe it's a second light source because there's very little illumination down here in the grass. And if it were the sun, it would be there. Uh, it looks like late in the day. Uh, and I would say just work on her pose because you got that dancer in so many elegant poses. She looks just a wee bit awkward uh, in, in the image. But I like what you're trying to do, and keep on keep on pressing yourself to improve. 